How's it going guys? Zim's Jeep here. I'm going to be making a video today on how to uh, install wire mold. Um, got a little project here out in my garage that I want to start. Um, need some extra outlets and uh, this seems like the best way of going about it. So um, I'll show you exactly what I'm going to be doing here now. Okay, so my basic plan here, I got this outlet on the back wall of my garage. Uh, my bench is underneath. What I want to do is I want to install another outlet down around here somewhere at the end of the bench. Uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to wrap the wire mold around this wall and uh, I want to install another outlet over here somewhere to use my power tools. So the actual system itself is, um, you know, consists of a few components. What I basically have here is I have a two gang junction box. This is going to be uh, allow me to mount two outlets in it. There's going to be two outlets here two outlets here and two outlets over there. So we got three of those. Uh, the only real specialty connection we needed for this installation is this inside 90 degree elbow that is going to wind up being installed here in the corner to wrap the uh, wire mold track around the corner. Uh, just for, for reference for you guys, they also sell an outside 90 so you can go around an outside corner. They sell straight splices so if you want to connect two sections of track on the wall you can do that. And uh, there's a few more other connections there too for some oddball installations. And I also picked up a package of mounts. This is to mount the track onto the wall. All right. The only other wire mold component I bought is obviously the track. I got two sections of 10 foot track here. Um, I'm going to use that to interconnect all the junction boxes. Uh, I also have a box of outlets that I picked up at Home Depot, and of course some plates for the uh, the boxes when we're done. Other than that, all you really need is some wire. I'm going to use 12 gauge Romex for this since this is a 20 amp circuit. And obviously the tools to install it. Alright, so basically the first location we're going to be working on is right here. I'm going to show you what is necessary to actually start the wire mold system off this existing outlet on the wall. Alright, so what we have here is I took one of the boxes out of uh, the junction box out of the packaging. And what this uh, box is also known as is a starter box and reason for that is as you can see here there's an actual stamped piece of metal in the back of this box that can be knocked out and when you take this piece out and remove this outlet off the wall this is going to mount right over the existing box and what that's going to allow you to do is bring your wiring out of the inside of the wall and onto the surface of your drywall and into the new box. All right, and then what you do is on the sides of these boxes is a series of knockouts to accept the track. What you would do is you twist this, knock this out, and then what this does is it basically will fit over the track like this, and uh, that's how you start your system of uh, running the track down the wall to all your devices. Alright, so now one of the most important steps before we go any further here is we want to make sure we turn the power off to the circuit we're going to be working on. So go down to your load center or circuit breaker panel, find the proper breaker, shut it off, and that way you can work safely on this outlet without having to worry about getting shocked. I'm going to go ahead and remove this outlet now from the junction box. Pull the outlet out, expose the wiring. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the outlet so we can uh, make room to install the new backing plate for the wire mold junction box. Alright, so I went ahead and removed the outlet. Just uh, loosen the screws up on each side, obviously. Uh, pull the wires off. Now, uh, we have four wires here. Five if you want to include the bare ground. Um, what that basically means is that this is a midstream outlet somewhere in the circuit. And what you have is you have a hot coming in, you have a neutral coming in, and then you have a neutral going out and a hot going out to the next device down on the circuit. No problem at all with this. All we're going to have to do is uh, reconnect the outlet the way it was connected initially. But we're probably going to have to pigtail two of the wires, a neutral and a hot, so we can feed downstream to our new outlet that's going to be running with the wire mold. Uh, so what we're going to go ahead and do now...
We'll go ahead and install the backing plate. Again, what you're going to do is you're just going to take the wires, you're going to feed them through the backing plate, and you're going to install the plate with the two screws that originally held the outlet in place. And that's really all there is to that. And uh, we can go ahead and start getting our track ready that's going to run down to the next outlet on uh, the other side of the workbench. Okay, I made a mark on the wall where I want to install the next junction box. I'm approximately 50 inches away from the, the one we're currently working on. So uh, we're going to go ahead and cut the track now. This stuff isn't too overly difficult to cut. Uh, Hacksaw usually gets the job done. So the next step with doing this is we got our cut piece of track here. Here's our next backing plate that's going to be going on the wall. This uses as an example what you're going to be doing. These three tabs here on the backing plate, you got to decide which one you want to use to attach your track to. Now most of the time you're probably going to want to use the middle one just to make it look nice. And if you look on the back of the track here, there's actually two tabs on either side and this middle piece flexes a little bit when you press it. So the idea is you want to insert one of these tabs behind this metal sleeve and into these two ears on the back of the wire mold track. So essentially what you're doing, you're pressing this. Okay, it's kind of difficult to do with the camera here, but you're pressing that onto the backing plate. Uh, what I find a lot of times is uh, the best way to go about this. Take a pair of pliers and you bend this tab out just a hair to give yourself a little bit more space on the back side here. And that makes this track slide into the plate a lot easier. Just watch your hands. This edge of this is sharp and you can cut yourself pretty easily. Alright, so as you can see I got the track pushed onto the, uh, the one plate there. I'm going to go ahead now and take a level. Put it on the track here, get it level on the wall. Alright, and what you want to do then is take the level off and take a pencil and somewhere in the middle of these two boxes here I'm going to put a line on the top and on the bottom of the track. All right? I'm going to pull this off here now and what that line is going to do for us is we have again our accessory pack that we purchased. You got to uh, go ahead and mount a, um, a mounting clip on the wall for the track. And uh, what that basically looks like is, uh, is this right here. Okay, the idea behind this is that the track snaps onto this when it's on the wall and gives it a little bit extra support. Now, if all you're doing is running this track a short distance between two boxes, in most cases you don't need to add one of these because the boxes itself is enough to support the track. Uh, I'd say if you're going anywhere over, say, three feet between boxes, you want to start adding these clips in just so it doesn't start bowing away from the wall. Just another little note about these clips here. Obviously, the track is going to be slipping into this, so what you want to do is you want to use a screw that, when it's installed, gives you uh, as flat a surface as possible. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you don't want to be installing some, uh, you know, a hex head screw or a big pan head screw into this because the track isn't going to be able to slip in there. So what I usually use is just a drywall screw. That works perfect, keeps it flat. Uh, if you can catch a stud, that's good. If you can't, do what I did, just put a wall anchor in there and uh, zip this uh, bracket right onto that. Now getting the track onto the actual clip can be tricky sometimes, it is a friction fit so uh, most of the time you can just wail on it a little bit and it'll pop right on there. Alright, down here at the next device, or the next uh, group of outlets, I just slipped the uh, backing plate now into the edge of the track like I showed you before. You want to get the plumb and level on the wall and just mark your two mounting holes for your screws. Pull this back off there, and again, same thing, if you catch studs, great, if not, put some hollow wall anchors in there. Okay, so you guys are getting the basic idea now on how this system gets installed on the wall. Uh, I'm just going to finish this up over here, and I'm going to do the rest of it. last thing I want to show you is uh, the installation of this corner bracket. Alright, and uh, what I usually do is I'll go to the corner where it's going to be installed, put it into the corner, and what I'll do is I'll mark 
where I need the track to go to on each side so I know where to measure from from the box to this line now uh, to cut the proper length track. Just one thing of note with these corner brackets if you take a quick look the track slips onto this from obviously the outer point here to this lip so make sure you account for that when you take your measurement of track between your box and where this elbow piece is going to go. Okay, so to bring you guys up to speed here, I got the final mounting plate installed here at the end of the track. This section of track, which is 10 feet, I have a mounting clip here. And there's also a mounting clip here that runs back to this corner here where I have the elbow installed, the inside elbow, and of course the two um, junction boxes on this run. So that completes the actual track and backing plate installation. What we got to do now is we'll, um, we'll put our wire into the track and uh, get the outlets installed. Alright, so here now I'm just feeding uh, my wire into the track here from the first uh, box and down to the uh, next box in line. Okay, so what we're basically left with here is about 8 to 10 inches of wire on either end of the track. This is number 12 uh, wire. This is what you need for a 20 amp circuit. Um, if you're running a 15 amp, you can get away with using 14 gauge wire, but uh, as anyone would tell you, and I recommend, if you're going to be doing any electrical work out in a shop or a garage or something, you're going to be running power tools, do yourself a favor and just spend a few extra bucks and run a uh, 20 amp circuit with 12 gauge wire. Give you plenty of capacity for the future. Just one quick note of caution guys, when you're going and pulling your wire through the um, track, be careful on the edge here. This edge is very sharp and you could very easily start skinning the insulation off the end of your wires here, okay? So just when you're pushing this through, push it, the wires towards the back side of the track and then push. Uh, that way you don't risk the, um, the possibility of, again, you know, chafing the uh, insulation off the wires. Uh, you get it short inside this track here, you can have all sorts of problems. Okay, one other thing I wanted to point out here, we're looking at the, uh, the first box on the system here, the existing box that I had in the garage. What I did was I took one of my ground pigtails and on the mounting plate there's a hole provided here for a ground screw. And what I did was I took that ground pigtail, wrapped it around there and tightened that screw down. So essentially what that does is it bonds the entire wire mold system, which is metal, uh, back to the uh, circuit breaker panel ground bar. Okay, um, It's a secondary means of grounding. Obviously the, the outlet itself, when you go and connect it, um, it itself grounds to the box, but uh, it's always a good idea to tie this in to provide a secondary means of ground. Okay, our next step that we're going to do here is we're going to take our actual junction box for the wire mold system and mount it onto the backing plate on the wall. Now the way this is done, it's not very difficult. What you got to do is you first got to take out your knockouts that are, you're going to use for wherever your wire mold track is. So again, this is going to be mounted on the wall like this, and obviously we have a um, piece of track that is running down the wall. So that tells us obviously we have to take out this middle knockout, and you basically just take a pair of uh, wire cutters, twist it a few times, and it breaks right out. For the next part of this, basically all we're going to do is stick all of our wires through the holes here and press this plate into place over the track and with the junction box comes this bag of screws and what these are is what uh, mounts the box back to the plate. Now these can be a little tricky to get in here. Uh, I usually try to start with the, the bottom one just because it's easier to see. And it's just a matter of getting it started. And then you take a screwdriver and just drive it home. You don't have to go too tight because what you can start doing is distorting the um, back mounting plate because what it's basically doing is it's grabbing that and it's trying to suck it into the box. 
So just snug it up enough where it's uh, going to hold the, again, the junction box onto the, the plate there. So I'm going to go ahead and install uh, the remaining three screws in the corners there and uh, repeat that for the other two boxes and we'll be ready to wire this. Alright guys, so I basically got this all set up here ready to go. What I basically did was I took two outlets and I cross power over from you know neutral over to neutral on the other side and the hot over to the hot on the other side. Alright, and what I'm going to do on the first outlet is I'm going to take the two neutrals and the two hots from the box and tie those into you know the two hots onto the gold and the two neutrals onto the silver. That'll bring power into these two and then the new wires that we ran through the wire mold are going to hook up to the uh, screws on the second outlet here and uh, that will basically complete the circuit in this box you can put those back in there and uh, I'm going to do a similar type of um, uh, installation for this uh, box down here basically that's just a feed in and a feed out so it's a little bit easier but uh, same type of thing I'm going to make up a, a gang of outlets like this for that box as well alright so uh, let me get these in here and uh, we'll be ready to move on to the next step so one more final detail here to complete. We just got to install the uh, inside 90 trim piece onto this corner here. It's just a friction fit. One thing of note, you want to make sure you don't pinch the wires when you're going ahead and putting this on. And it just snaps right into place. Alright guys, that pretty much wraps it up. As you can see, I went ahead and I got all the outlets and covers installed on the, the boxes. I uh, just uh, turned the breaker back on, powered everything up, and uh, it works. So, it's a, another successful job. The wire mold system worked out nice. It's a, it's a good alternative if you don't have access to the uh, inside of the walls, obviously, to run uh, you know, cabling, or if you don't want to cut the sheetrock open, which I didn't want to do in this case. And uh, you know, it's, it's a lot easier, in my mind, to use in conduit. Anyway guys, I'm Zim's Jeep. If you like what you saw, maybe you want to check out some of the other videos on my channel and subscribe. Got uh, maintenance and repair type videos, tool reviews, and just some other miscellaneous stuff on there that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching.